Hey, what's up guys? It's been a couple days. I was just doing my morning gold farm and I had an above average map and I realized I haven't made a video yet on the uh, farming strategy that I've been enjoying this league. And I just wanted to get that out there for you guys really quickly. I get asked about this a lot on stream. I've tried a lot of different ones. Uh, the Rogue Exile one is arguably probably the better farm that a lot of people are doing right now. The just gigantification, crazy ghosted Rogue Exiles. But uh, that one is you need a super giga build with like high DPS, insane defense, or you know some mix of those. And this one is just casual and fun. Uh, most builds can do this farm. Uh, you don't require anything particularly strong. This is you know a high end version of my league starter. Just a uh, bleed gladiator, nothing crazy or special, just last rate leap slam bleed gladiator. And in fact, I clear most of the map on a pseudo three link, uh, just with leap slam, increased AOE, item rarity, and faster attacks. Actually, it's just like a two link. <laughs> um, so there's like no damage gems at all. And this is what's clearing most of the map for me, just to clear as quickly as possible. Despite what it says right here, I was uh, I went and had breakfast after I ran the map. These maps only take me about three minutes or so to run. And I get 41,000 gold. Th like I said, this is an above average map. But yeah, this one map, I got 41,000 gold. I got a Valdos. I got a Divine. A uh, couple really good dustable uniques and 12 Chaos, two Exalts. Uh, very solid, easy maps to run. There's some investment into it. But yeah, this is my favorite farm. It is Ambush with Beyond. Nothing else to it. If you're just looking for something to do, this is the farm that I like doing. I didn't invent this or anything. I'm sure there's plenty of other videos on it, but this is basically what I came up with just, you know, wanting to do ambush. So yeah, let's just get into it and talk about what this is. And I'll show you an example of a map run and uh, why I like this so much. All right, so first up the Atlas, what is the theory? The idea is that we are going to be just doing strong boxes, strong boxes with the scarabs and the map device craft to get as many of the best quality strong boxes that we can on the map. We want to be able to open them multiple times. So we go into just all the strong box nodes, additional strong boxes. You want to have uh, additional chance to open again. You want them corrupted and rare. So you don't have to waste your time trying to get engineers orbs and rolling them up and all that. And then we just take all of the ones to get a higher chance for more strong boxes. Then as usual, we go into all of the increased effective map modifiers, all of it that we can get. Although we do skip chiseled perfection because we're going to be running non quality to eight mod maps. More about that in a second. We run blue alters because we care about just, you know, raw quant. If you have a build that can run blue alters rather, and you can do raw quant, I do recommend doing blue alters. Uh, but if you can't do that, then red alters are okay. Really, that depends on the price of chisels, the price of divines. As divines are getting cheaper, chaos is worth more. So red alters are actually kind of looking pretty good. Divines are going down pretty hard. But if a divine was worth 175, 200 chaos each, then, you know, the chance for a divine shrine or divine altar would be worth more. But just the raw chaos, you know, that's a personal choice, but I like to go for the raw quant and the gamble of uh, maybe getting a divine altar. I've only seen one this entire league and I've run a lot of maps. <laughs> so don't bet on that. That's never, never really worth. So yeah, we want to go into beyond as well. We want as many monsters as possible on the map. We also just take some of these free uh, shrine nodes right here for funsies. And then the big thing is where like probably a third of the profits, if not half the profits actually come from, is we want to get T17 maps to drop. So T17s can't drop in a T17. You have to run T16s to drop a T17. And to do that, we want to have as much quant as possible, um, as much pack size, as many monsters as possible. That's why we have beyond as well. And we want to take all of the shaping nodes right here. Very specifically, we do not want singular focus. This reduces the number of T17s that will drop by, I think the estimate's like 24%, something like that. And then we wanna take all of the increased chance for higher tier map drops. This will make it so more of the lower tier maps will roll up to T16s. And I believe the way that the calculation works is when a T16 drops, it also calculates, you know, based on your chance for a T17 to drop at the time for a T17 to drop from that. So the more T16s that drop, the more T17s that drop. So uh, in fact, we actually end up getting most of them from our cartographer strong boxes. That's where uh, tons of maps will drop. And in fact, you can get duplicated T17s, all of that. This is less than a week of me playing pretty casually on stream. Like I only stream about four to five hours a day. Uh, I am way too addicted to deadlock right now. So that's where a lot of my time has been in the past week. But uh, yeah, in just a week of, you know, four hours a day on stream, I have this many T17s and I've probably run about 10 of them myself. Uh, I occasionally want to mix those in as well. In bulk, these will sell for nearly a divine each. You can, depending on which map it is. Um, fortresses, you can get at one divine. It 
time of recording. You can get uh, one divine per in bulk if you have big enough bulk. And then the other ones are usually about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 per divine. And yeah, each one of these is really, really good. And then that's the general idea. Of course, you know, I'll have a max roll full strategy link below. That's what we do. And then what you're going to be running, and you'll see here, we drop a lot of T16 8 mod maps. And this is part of the strategy as well. If you want to bulk sell these, you can go to PoE Exchange and set up a whole bulk exchange. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a video on how to bulk sell maps. This is where probably another third of the profits come from, is you can sell these at about 10 to 12 chaos per in bulk. And you can go to TFT if you want to, or you can do it on like PoE Exchange. This is where a ton of money can come from. Uh, so these are eight mod maps. We also sell, we over self-sustain. We're running eight mod maps, and then we also get them back. And the way that we do that is by using, these are our scarabs right here, by using the cartography scarab of corruption, non-unique maps will be corrupted with eight modifiers. The maps that drop are corrupted with eight modifiers, and you'll just get a ton of them because we are dropping so many maps in the map that, uh, yeah, you get a lot of them, you just want this. And then in addition, we are running three ambush scarabs and one ambush scarab of discernment. This makes it more likely to get the rare varieties, the arcanists, the cartographers, the diviners, strong boxes, those are the best ones. And then when we run the map, we also want to do ambush right here. The general idea is you go on the map, you want to run it with, uh, with blue, of course, because we're running blue altars, and just go through the map, hit, click on all the strong boxes, blow everything up. I also got 41,948 gold in that last map that I ran. Uh, tons of gold can drop. On the low end, you're looking at 20 to 25K. And on the very high end, I think I've hit like 45, 50K in a T16. Uh, T17s are higher. I've hit like 80K in a T17. But uh, yeah, if we're just running T16s, you'll get about 20 to 40,000 gold. There's a high variance there based on just like the, the rolls on the map. So you're gonna self-sustain your maps. You can start with just running non eight mod maps. But as soon as you start getting those rolling in, you want to switch to eight mod maps. You will get so many. Like, I need to put this in a quad tab. I just, I have so many. I don't even know where I ended up putting them. Those are uniques to dust. I have more here. These are just not eight mod ones. Um, here's another tab of, <laughs> of maps before I started switching to eight mods. And then in my actual map tab, uh, they are just totally full. If we just scroll down, I've been doing this strategy for a while. So yeah, this is just totally full. These are all eight mod maps. Um... Let's see, right here, Glacier's full, Geode's full, Jungle Valley's full. More maps than you know what to do with. Like, i am actually just been really lazy about selling my 8-mod maps. Uh, Toxic Sewer's totally full. Underground Sea's getting a lot of them. You get so many maps, you can sell them. There's no issue with sustain at all. Once it starts rolling, you'll have more than you know what to do with. And you can just sell them to people in bulk. So, a thing that you'll want to do, a very, very important thing, is you'll want to go to poe.re right here and make a regex, regular expression here, PoE.re, if you don't know, is a great website for doing uh, finding regular expressions to put in your little search bar here. And what we want to go for is, you know, map mods that we cannot run. And you want to click, like, I don't want these modifiers. Click right here. This is, for example, my build. I'm a bleed build, so I don't want Reflect Fizz. I don't like less recovery rate or regen. And I don't want Avoid Poison or uh, Bleed. And I don't want additional physical damage reduction. So I have my regex right here. I copy it. And I put it in right here, and the ones that are highlighted are ones that I can run. So what I do is I'll run about five at a time. So I'll grab five of these. I know I can run these. I put in the map device. Let's actually dump the gold right here. Boom. It's corruption scarab, discernment scarab, and three ambush. Uh, I've just been really lazy. You can get these cheaper if you don't go to Faustus. Uh, I do need to remove a little bit of gold here to buy. But I've been going to Faustus really, really easy. Just type in divine right here. Type in ambush right here. So you might be a little, <laughs> we saw the price actually just got updated to be less favorable for us as I was talking. Um, I was buying those for much better prices like a week ago, but uh, you know, the popularity of Ambush is pretty high right now. It's just such a very, very easy, generally profitable strategy that, uh, yeah, it's no wonder that people are doing it. Anyway, so Ambush Scarab right here, I just, even though this is like not ideal, in fact, I don't really like this ratio. I've been buying them at one to 22. I'm gonna place the order. And this will probably fulfill at some point, um, you know, just based on the, the market pressure. You don't really have to go with exactly the recommended. You can go for a little bit more favorable to you and just let it wait a little bit. So we get the ambush scarab. We take the corruption scarab right here, grab some of those. And we also want to go for discernment. So yeah, discernment is the most expensive. So one to nine has been what it's been like for the past week or so. Uh, I was getting them at one to 15 a little bit earlier. 
But yeah, look at that. It did fulfill, right? So it was telling me 1 to 20, but I was like, you know what? I've been buying them 1 to 22. I bet you it's going to go back to that. Um, and you can check the competing trades and all that if you want to get a more, uh, you want to spend time making it more efficient. But then, yeah, we just grab these scarabs and you 100% will make your money back. Don't worry about that at all. You know, if the prices get way worse or whatever, then fine. But uh, it has not been an issue whatsoever. So we do that. Uh, let's open up the map and we'll run one real quick. In my build, I am entirely oriented. I'm running a gold flask. I dropped my granite flask and my leap slam, which is my clear skill. I have that entirely set up for uh, increased AOE, item rarity, and faster attacks. It just has, it's a two socket damage with the socketed gems right here. And it's all I need because I have bleed pops right here. Uh, I have for a little bit faster clear. Let's do it. It's a little rippy because I'm taking off some, uh, some defensive auras, but this is kind of fun to do just to clear the maps a little bit faster. Does run the risk of maybe uh, of dying, but it's more fun. This makes my AOE much, much bigger, and we also get Hail of Ash pops. So the clear is, is really nice. Um, the one thing that it's not necessary that I do recommend is being able to click on all the quant alters. Absolutely not mandatory whatsoever, but it it is really nice. You'll definitely, you know, you can get up to like 100% increased quant from the, uh, from the alters right there. I need to make my loot filter a little bit stricter. I made it less strict last week because I just, I wanted more, um, just more bubble gum in general. I was, for the dusting, I was using so many armor scraps and so many, all right, we got a nice little diviners, uh, so many armor scraps and whetstones that, um, oh god, I hate petrified amber, that I ran out because I was just kind of putting quality on everything before I dusted. If you don't know about that, you want to quality your things before you dust them because you actually get 20% more value from it. My build is not very good at the uh, Petrified Amber because I'm damaged over time. And they're, they get a little bit of damage out on it. So the nice thing about my build is I can just click all these rippy ones. Uh, you know, I might die here and there, but I'm level 100. I don't care about that. My build is, in general, so darn tanky that it's just kind of fine. Imagine double mage blood when I was recording the video. So some of these maps can take a little bit longer if we get something that is kind of... Uh, the nice thing is actually when it takes longer, it's when you're opening the same strong box like a bunch of times. Especially when you just keep popping those uh, those Arcanists and they feel good. So yeah, uh, that's the general idea. This is this is the map. <laughs> um, just click on the strong boxes. If you, you don't need like a crazy clear speed build or anything because all the monsters are concentrated in an area. I've just been a huge Strongbox fan for a long time. We actually, when they first did the, the new Atlas, yeah, I can click all of these except for the uh, Endurance Charger one. When they, do, when they did the new Atlas passives and they put Strongboxes on it, I just made, I think I made like two or three videos on just how much uh, Strongboxes were so fun. Yeah, so you can see all these are 8-mod maps. Now, we will get a lot of 8-mod maps that are not really desirable maps because we are not running Singular Focus, but that's okay. So many of them drop. Every single one of those purple maps is an 8-mod map. And in fact, if it's not purple, it's still 8-mod because uh, it's just unidentified. Uh, yep, so reduced per endurance charge. I can't run that one. That one breaks my build. All right. There we go. So a bunch of maps dropped. Yeah, less than three minutes for this map. No spectacular drops, but we did get about 30,000 gold. Got a couple uniques to dust, and we did get a bunch of eight mod maps. These ones, at least, it, we can sell strands, we can sell toxic sewers, defiled cathedrals, glacier, whatever is a desired map. You can sell those for, like I said, 10 to 12 casts or so per map. And uh, so this alone, uh, what I do with these, these ones is I just give them to my map runners, and I have them do that. That's a map that you can run. That is the strategy that I've been enjoying. You get those Arcanists, you get dupli tons of duplicated Divines, duplicated Valdos. You get a good Cartographer strong box. You get a ton of maps drop. Really, really enjoying the strategy. Insane amount of bubblegum currency too. Way too much bubblegum currency. I've never had this much in my stash before. Just everything totally capped out. Just pleasant, fun to run. The big thing about it for me is the fact that we can sustain our gold, like over sustain our gold you know, 30,000, even on the low end, right? Get about 30,000 gold in a three minute map. You run, let's scale it down a little bit. Let's say 15, that's about 450,000 gold per hour, which is, you know, not top end like those uh, those rogue exile farms, 
but it is a good amount and that's more than plenty to sustain a really good strategy you just play for two hours a day and your gold is you know you're doing your full map runners you're doing your full uh your full dusting and your boats and everything but that's it just wanted to share with you guys a strategy that i've been enjoying it's not the best in the entire league but it is a really fun sustainable good one it's made me plenty of currency i've been having fun with it and yeah that's it thanks for watching see ya